Honored to be joined by Dr. Francis Boyle today, and his geopolitical expertise is much appreciated. And I want to kind of clarify something I said in the last segment and then let Dr. Boyle finish his statements, because again, you're, you're just getting into really, it's, it's more just legalese talk. It's international law when it comes to war and war crimes that you are citing here. And it's funny because I don't really see that anywhere else, Dr. Boyle. It's, it seems to be you. I know you're not the only man with that knowledge, but you seem to be the only one presenting it to the public. And of course, it's right here on InfoWars. But when I'm, just to clarify what I, what I said in the last segment, most of the international community is, is standing with Israel. I mean, we see that not just in America. Uh, California lights up its capital in white and blue, and you have uh, Australia, and you have all these other, uh, in, in Europe, and all these countries supporting Israel. They're all in for Israel. But yet, what you're, what you're referring to here is what the international law is when it comes to war and the Geneva Convention. And so the only statement I've ever seen anywhere near to what you're talking about, it did come from the U.N., not many people heard it, but there was a statement at the U.N. basically condemning Israel for what they've done to Palestine. But outside of that, why do you suppose nobody's talking about what you're talking about? And, and why do you think it? I mean, it appears I would say most of the international community is is fully in support of what Israel is doing here. Well, first of all, it's not most of the international community. You have uh, uh, two million, two, sorry, two billion Muslims that oppose what's going on here. And you have uh, 58 members of the Islamic Conference Organization that oppose what's going on here. But yes, the uh, uh, Western news media, uh, except for uh, InfoWars, uh, is uh, under Zionist control, domination, funding, executives, pundits, experts. Just, just watch it. ABC, NBC, CNN, MSNBC, B uh, BBC. It's all being told from the uh, uh, Zionist uh, perspective. So, of course, you uh, don't hear uh, any of the uh, uh, considerations I'm, wage uh, I'm uh, uh, talking about here uh, today, because the international law is all against, uh, is, is against Israel. Again, that was decided by the uh, International uh, Court of Justice in their uh, uh, advisory opinion on Israel's wall. And uh, let me repeat, here's a uh, review of my book. Uh, quote, the advisory opinion of the International Court of Justice on the Israeli wall, published in July, could almost stand alone as a review of Professor Francis Boyle's book. The World Court judges comprehensively confirm and validate his work in elaborating the case for the Palestinians in international law. That is correct. Uh, I've been arguing for you know, the Palestinians since uh, I entered Harvard in 1971 as an ardent uh, uh, Palestinian supporter. That's why I don't teach at Harvard. Uh, but uh, it, it, the Western news media is just not, not going to report all this. It's Zionist control dominated. It's that simple. You know, I don't know how much more you want to lean into that, but I, I'm glad you brought that up because there's a wild phenomenon that happens here at Infowars, and and it's not that I want to get any 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 fuel to these to these wild-eyed, deranged people, but it's funny because you and I know this is happening today. I can I can just hear it. I can just hear it telepathically. The people that are tuned in that are that are fully in support of Israel and and they buy into this that oh Hamas is obviously the only problem here and that. I'm just trying to remain neutral, at least for the sake of this interview, and I can hear them. Oh, Hamas are the terrorists. They beheaded babies. They raped women in the streets. They dragged them. They're the bad guys. What's wrong with you? Why aren't you condemning this? And I can hear that. But it's funny because at the same time, there are people who are con completely convinced that Infowars or Alex Jones or myself is somehow in the Zionist-controlled media. And so it's, it's this wacko thing where if you actually try to be neutral— and you actually try to just deliver the reality of the situation, all these wild-eyed conspiracies arise. So I, I'm just, I'm glad that you mentioned that today because it's something that sticks in my crawl here where it's like you get accused of being X and then somebody else accuses you of being Y and, and really you're, you're neither, you're just neutral in the situation. But I don't know if you want to lean into that further because I do think this is a heavy topic. 
Why is it that so many people, even people that didn't fall for the whole war in Ukraine being supported 24-7, immediately they're all in to support Israel? Zionist brainwashing in the uh, news media and in uh, higher education. Uh, you know, I spent seven years at Harvard. I have three degrees from Harvard. I spent two years uh, teaching there at Harvard. Everything on the Middle East is taught from a Zionist uh, perspective. It, it's that simple. Uh, uh, and, you know, it's true at the other uh, uh, Ivy Leagues uh, uh, as well, elite uh, educational uh, institutions. I mean, look, I was as pro-Israel as anyone else until the 1967 war. I had been brainwashed uh, uh, to support Israel. But when the 1967 war came, just looking at it objectively, as you're calling for here, uh, uh, Israel struck first. It was uh, acts of serial aggression around uh, uh, to the Arab states. Uh, they uh, ethnically cleansed the uh, inhabitants uh, out of uh, uh, the West Bank, uh, out of uh, uh, Gaza, out of uh, uh, the Golan Heights, and stole this land. So I concluded that everything I had been told about Israel was a total lie, and I, I better study it. So I went to college, and starting in 1969, I, I began studying it. So, uh, it, it, but, you know, the whole uh, uh, milieu here in the United States is... Uh, uh, pretty much Zionist-controlled and uh, and dominated. That's been my experience since 1967. By the way, I have seen from Orthodox Jews, you don't see this in the media, and of course nobody wants to promote this, but I have seen many Orthodox Jews that, I mean, even in response to these recent attacks, many Orthodox Jews saying that they decry Zionism and they even decry the state of Israel. You don't ever hear from that I would ask you this. We got 60 seconds till the break, and we'll pick it up on the other side. Do you think, and I, I don't want to hearken too much to 9-11 here, but, I mean, sure, could the U.S. have allowed 9-11 to happen to start a further war? Do you think Israeli intelligence could have allowed this attack over the weekend to launch a further war? There are two theories here. Uh, on what, one, you are correct. Uh, this could have been that Israeli intelligence and Netanyahu knew what was going to happen and let it happen because he was uh, uh, domestically in a desperate uh, situation over there. And this uh, now allows him uh, to appear a warlord. Uh, the second interpretation, however, uh, is uh, this is very similar to what happened in 1973 with the Yom Kippur War. Uh, the uh, 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 Israeli officials uh, treat Palestinians as if they're children. I've been there myself. I've seen it. It's disgusting that, oh, we're the uh, great uh, 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 Zionist uh, uh, ubermensch, and you're the little bitty uh, uh, Palestinian uh, untermensch, and you need to do just what we uh, tell you to do. All right, Dr. Uh, Francis have... Boyle, hold that thought. We'll be right back. Having a conversation here with Dr. Francis Boyle, and I want to pick it up where we left off. Let me frame it back up for you here, Dr. Boyle. Would the U.S. have allowed Pearl Harbor to happen to get involved in a larger war? Would the U.S. have allowed 9-11 to happen to get involved in a larger war? Would Israel have allowed the attacks over the weekend to happen to further their incursion on the Gaza Strip? And I guess I would... Maybe even want you, if you would, to start with this. I mean, there, there's no debate that the state of Israel has one of the most secure airspaces, if not the most secure airspace in the world, as well as one of the most advanced and penetrating intelligence networks in the world. And we see men flying in with parachutes and rifles, killing people at a music festival. I mean, do you believe that that could have happened organically? Do you think there was a legitimate intelligence failure? Or again, could they have let it happen? Dr. Francis Boyle. Well, oh, you're right. Uh, President Roosevelt knew full well that there was going to be an attack at uh, Pearl Harbor, and he let it happen because he, uh, he wanted in on the Second World War. 9-11, I think <clears throat> all the evidence shows uh, that the uh, United States government knew it was happening 
and the Bush administration wanted it to happen and let it happen. So, yes, I'm not ruling out that uh, uh, Netanyahu knew full well that this was going to happen, and he let it happen because of his own internal uh, uh, predicament that he had there uh, in, in Israel. Now, here's an interesting one, because my crew is always out there looking at stories and angles as well. A uh, very important crew that we have here. And there's another angle I want to bring up that they brought to my attention. But here's an interesting one. Remember, last week, they had that giant emergency alert system test. Well, apparently, that's being used now in Israel. And Israel is using the emergency alert system to tell everybody in Gaza to flee as they basically uh, are turning it into a parking lot. But um, they're saying, hmm, is this maybe evidence that they knew it was coming, but they did the test here to make sure the system works so that they could use it in Gaza? I don't know if you want to comment on that uh, or pick up where you left off talking about kind of the cultural aspects of uh, Israel and the Palestinians and, and how they kind of look down upon them or, as you, I would say, described it earlier, as being racist. Right. Well, as for the uh, first point, I really uh, don't know, except there's nowhere for the two million people in Gaza to go. Yeah. Israel uh, knows it. And as you said, they're going to turn Gaza into a parking lot. They'll, they'll kill tens of thousands if they have to simply uh, exterminate them. But as for the uh, second point, right, I've spent many years uh, working with the uh, Palestinians and uh, Whenever they are there in the uh, company of Israelis, I'm oftentimes there, they treat them like children. It's outright uh, racist uh, uh, mentality. Uh, I would say, again, it's we are the uh, 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 Zionist uh, ubermensch, and you are the Palestinian untermensch, and you should just do what we uh, tell you to do and, and be glad to do it. So they've grossly uh, underestimated the Palestinians. I, I've worked with them. They're very bright, intelligent, hardworking uh, people, uh, uh, extremely uh, well-educated. So uh, that also could be a, a factor here because we don't, you know, we don't want to deny uh, Palestinian uh, agency uh, what happened here. Let me ask you this then, because I hear this notion brandied about all the time too, which is. Well, the Palestinians have been given the opportunity. They've been given the Gaza Strip. They could have turned it into a Tel Aviv. That was the argument. They'll turn it into a Tel Aviv. They'll turn it into a Miami. And they didn't. Uh, what's your response to that? Well, uh, the, uh, uh, it was Hamas that drove the Zionists out of uh, Gaza Strip in 2005. That's what uh, uh, qualifies them as a... Uh, national liberation uh, movement. And then starting in uh, 2007, uh, Israel, after Hamas won a free fair uh, election over there, uh, which, by the way, was supported by uh, President Bush Jr. and uh, Condoleezza Rice, uh, Israel imposed a genocidal uh, economic embargo upon them uh, to uh, prevent them from engaging in uh, economic uh, development. So, you know, Israel has only itself to blame for the deplorable uh, circumstances uh, in, in Gaza that motivated uh, Hamas to uh, undertake this act of national liberation as they saw it. If I may uh, respond here, not to put words in your mouth, so correct me if I'm wrong. So essentially you're saying Israel and the powers that be never allowed the Gaza Strip to be turned into a new Tel Aviv. No. And indeed, uh, uh, I've been over there. Uh, you know, the Palestinians are extremely talented, industrious, hardworking, and intelligent. If, if given a fair, reasonable chance, they, they would have done it. But they've never been, been given that chance. No. Now, it, it's hard for me to tell what's real, what's not, what's propaganda, what's not. And I, and I like to tread lightly on these things. And so I'd like to get your... Uh, analysis on this, but it would appear that all the official numbers, and these date back uh, really decades, but even if you look at modern history, all the numbers in this struggle between Israel and, and Palestine, the Palestinians have suffered death at a tenfold rate 
compared to Israel. Is, is that accurate? That's correct. Even worse than that, if you go back to the uh, Nakba in uh, 1948, which uh, uh, what I originally studied uh, uh, at the University of Chicago in 1969 in great length at my, my course on Middle East uh, politics there, uh, far superior to anything they dish out at uh, Harvard and went through all the uh, uh, literature. Right, Israel just uh, engaged in massive uh, ethnic uh, cleansing of a half million Palestinians uh, driven uh, into exile around the world, driven into uh, Gaza, driven into uh, the West Bank to refugee camps, uh, and then again, uh, happening again, the Naxa in uh, 1967. So, you know, if you tote the uh, casualties up, uh, uh, the Zionist casualties have been minimal compared to what the Palestinians have suffered, right? Now, this is a little bit more of a wonky question, and, and maybe you can figure out a way to make it palatable. Why is the USA so attached at the hip to Israel? I hear this from politicians and people in media. The U.S., we need Israel. We need Israel. We couldn't exist without Israel. I mean, I scratch my head at that. I'll, I'll hold my tongue. But um, why, why is the United States so attached at the hip to Israel? Who, who needs who in this relationship? Well, first of all, Israel needs us. I mean, I, I dealt with uh, Shimon Peres, the former uh, prime minister, and at one point he said, we are completely dependent on the United States. And that is correct. Without the United States, Israel would be a failed state. There's no question about that. But uh, uh, American Jews uh, have you know, gotten together. They've gotten organized. Uh, they've put together the uh, uh, different, uh, many different uh, lobbying groups. Uh, they've raised a lot of money. They're quite politically active. And they bribe, threaten, uh, intimidate, and blacklist uh, all their uh, opponents, especially in uh, uh, Congress. You can read uh, the book by my friend, the late uh, uh, Paul Finley here from uh, Illinois. He used to represent uh, Abe Lincoln's uh, district, a Republican, called They Dare to Speak Out. If you speak out, uh, the Zionist uh, lobby here in the United States will slate you for destruction, as they did uh, uh, Congressman Finley. Also, our Senator uh, Chuck Percy, a very fine uh, senator, I supported him. Uh, they destroyed his career. So uh, that's that's why. That's why you only hear this. Now, I heard you but say that. I heard you say the word there: money, money. I mean, how how do the Zionists have enough money to influence American foreign policy? Well, it's like any other uh, lobbying group. Uh, I mean, uh, American Jews have been very successful, so they uh, they put their money uh, into these uh, different lobbying groups. Uh, uh, you know, ADL, APAC, uh, uh, Conference of uh, uh, Jewish Presidents, uh, organizations, etc. And then it's not just money buying people off, but it's threatening to destroy your career and actually destroy your career. Uh, if you speak out on uh, behalf of the Palestinians or uh, you uh, uh, you criticize what Israel is doing. ADL and APAC uh, maintain enemies lists of uh, uh, what they deem to be enemies of Israel. Uh, I'm on both lists. Uh, and uh, uh, people on that list, they'll destroy if they can. Uh, so that's that's just the way it goes, sure. Yeah, and again, this this gets into the to the wacky nature of it is you can get put on these ADL anti-Semite lists, and then you'll have other whack jobs out there saying that you're a Zionist shill and Zionist controlled. But I guess so it's kind of like the whole just point your finger and call your enemy a racist, and then that destroys them in the uh, in the court of public opinion. So so is it really that simple? They just they can have these groups like the ADL, they just label you an anti-Semite and then any dissent is is squashed? Well, it's not look, just labeling you an anti-Semite, they're labeling you uh, uh, an enemy of Israel. They go after Jews too, who uh, uh, speak out and criticize it. I had you know, several Jewish friends uh, who have criticized Israel. They 
they destroyed their careers. And, you know, they've asked me for to assist them. I've tried, uh, but that that's just the way they work. So it's it's not a question of anti semite Sure, they'll blame you with uh, uh, being an anti-Semite. I've been, you know, Zionists have accused me of everything but being a child molester for my support for the Palestinians. But it it's they'll go after Jews too. Indeed, they'll they'll treat treat Jews uh, worse than the rest of us. They they treat Jews who uh, criticize Israel as uh, as traitors. Uh, what can I say? You have uh, my friend Professor uh, Norman Finkelstein there at DePaul Law School, who uh, wrote a book uh, exposing Alec Dershowitz as a uh, as a plagiarist, and they destroyed his career there at DePaul. And, and DePaul is supposed to be Catholic, uh, and they they let Dershowitz, the other Zionists, get away with destroying his career. And he's been blacklisted. He can't get hired anywhere, despite his uh, you know, outstanding academic qualifications, PhD from Princeton, whatever. That's that's the way they work. Now, how accurate? I want to get back into that in a second. But the crew just put a, an image up on the screen, and I, I'm a kind of always felt this way. And maybe this is a mundane explanation, but it's got the rockets going up from are going into Israel, and then it's got the Iron Dome rockets going up to, to blow up those rockets, and it's U.S. Tax, taxpayer dollars on each side. Now, I think there's an element of truth to that. I don't know if that's, you know, directly uh, a perfect uh, visual of how this goes, but to me, it feels like this is a lot of the same. It, it's the same weapons manufacturers. It's the same groups funding both sides. How accurate to you, Dr. Boyle, is that image that we had on the screen? Well, we have to understand, uh, you know, Hamas doesn't really have rockets like uh, like Israel. We give Israel you know, advanced, sophisticated uh, munitions, precision guided weapons. I mean, the the uh, 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 Hamas shooting there, uh, they're uh, uh, for the most part sort of high grade uh, fireworks is what they are. They're more uh, for public relations uh, purposes than really uh, you know killing people. Whereas uh, what Israel is doing, uh, you know, is just wiping people. Well, now off. people are it's saying, not... people are saying. Let me just in interject because people are saying that that used to be the case, but it appears that Hamas has a lot more firepower now. They do. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where they got it, but it does appear they have more firepower at this point. Yes, because they they need it for self defense, as they see it. Right. The uh, Zionists are out to destroy them, and and. The, uh, kill as many uh, Palestinians as possible. We we have to fear uh, another Nakba, uh, from what uh, Netanyahu uh, has been uh, has been saying here. It looks like they you know if they could get away with it, they'd like to drive the entire two million uh, population of uh, Gaza uh, into into Egypt into the Sinai. That could happen. Uh, uh, again, they've mobilized over three hundred thousand troops. Uh, to to go into Gaza, so we're going to see you know a massive uh, uh, human tragedy here. Yeah, that that when I saw the rhetoric from Netanyahu, I, I was afraid of the worst. And and even though they've been bombing Gaza for I guess almost 24 hours now, they're saying this is just the beginning. The land invasion is next. What that will look like, I guess only time will tell. Um, I, I want to go back to what you were mentioning. Yeah, go ahead. Let me point there, though. The Biden administration has only exacerbated the situation by saying we are going to give blank check support to everything Israel is going to do to the Palestinians. They know full well there's going to be massive genocide in Gaza. And instead of the Biden administration saying, stop, now let's have a ceasefire on both sides. They have encouraged, they are arming, equipping, and supplying what is going to be a massive tragedy here uh, in Gaza that could very well spell out of control. We already have a shooting there uh, uh, by uh, Hezbollah uh, in into the uh, uh, border area. If Hezbollah gets involved, as they did in 2006, there'll be massive death and destruction on both sides. Remember, in 2006, uh, Israel did invade uh, Gaza. Hamas fought back. Uh, uh, over 1,000 Palestinians were massacred. And at that point, Hezbollah entered the war. 
Uh, and, you know, Hezbollah is very well armed yeah. uh, compared to the Palestinians. They, you know, they don't have just these uh, 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 advanced firecrackers. They, they've got rockets. And yeah, and, and to me at that point, correct me if I'm wrong, but to me at that point, it, it's basically Iran getting involved, and now we're one inch, or, one inch away from World War III. Well, I would not say uh, Iran. We have to be careful here, uh, Owen, because uh, the uh, diehard neocon uh, Zionists here in the United States are trying to use this as a pretext to attack Iran. Now, as of yesterday, both Blinken and Kirby have said they've seen no evidence that, that Iran is involved. But uh, there is going to be enormous pressure uh, uh, for us and, and Israel to attack Iran. Things could get out of control. You're right. There are Iranian uh, uh, forces in Syria. Uh, there, at the request of the Syrian government, which makes it uh, uh, legal under international law. Uh, and... Uh, Syria could get involved, uh, uh, Hezbollah could get involved, Egypt could get involved. Jordan, we have to understand how uh, uh, unstable Jordan is, the Hashemite uh, family. <laughs> the British put them in power, took them up from uh, Saudi Arabia and put them in power. And then uh, we took over and, and the CIA keeps uh, 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 the uh, Hashemite family there in power. Half their population is Palestinian. So this area itself could could blow up. And indeed, uh, I'm afraid that is why uh, the Biden administration sent off this uh, uh, aircraft carrier strike force under the Ford, uh, because they know, know what Israel is planning to do, and they know that that will produce a, a, a terrible adverse reaction, certainly in the uh, surrounding Arab states. You know, you bring up the CIA. I was going to go in the direction of Mossad, talk about Israel controlling our foreign policy. Is that Mossad? Is that blackmail? Is that the Jeffrey Epstein types? Uh, do, do, because I think there's an element of that at play here, certainly, with what we saw with Epstein being a spy and Epstein Island and, and the Lolita Express. That's correct. I mean, it's well known uh, Epstein uh, uh, was a front man for uh, Mossad, and he was running a, a blackmailing uh, operation there, the Lolita Express in Orgy Island. And uh, he had a lot of uh, uh, U.S. Uh, leaders, uh, you know, they have a list of them there in uh, Newsweek, uh, who were down there at Orgy Island, uh, found, probably found in you know, compromising positions with girls, and uh, films were taken. So, yes, blackmail uh, is, is part of it, yes. All right, I don't want to take you out of your, your league here, but I think you're probably in all the leagues. Now, this was brought to me by the crew, and it's funny. The only reason I'm aware of this is there is some, some biblical stuff on this, but it was also this um, kind of cultural thing was, was featured in a Russian film I watched that I liked called uh, Branded, and that's the red heifer phenomenon. Uh, are you familiar with the red heifer and what that means to Israel and specifically the al Aska Mosque that you mentioned earlier? Yes, there are these fanatical uh, uh, religious fundamentalist Jews uh, who want to destroy uh, Al-Aqsa and uh, build their so-called third temple. Well, you know, the second temple goes back to 70 AD, I mean, <laughs> destroyed by the Romans. Uh, that, if they do this, and they've tried to do this, and indeed, if you're following the press accounts, now you have... Uh, thousands of these uh, fanatical uh, uh, Jewish fundamentalists storming Haram al-Sharif, which is the plateau there, uh, and uh, uh, Al-Aqsa, threatening Al-Aqsa, threatening to destroy Al-Aqsa. That, that would be a conflagration if, if they were to do this, yes. So I, I just want to read this out so that the audience that might say, Red Heifer, what are you talking about? Here, here's just all these headlines that we have compiled here on the desk. The Red Heifer Project... Israeli government part of plan to build third temple at al Aska. That was the holy ground of the Muslims that you were mentioning earlier. First red heifer born in 2,000 years sparks fears of biblical end of days. Prophecy fulfilled after red cow is born at Temple of Israel. Jewish leaders in Israel needed a red heifer for temple ceremony, so Texas sent them five. <laughs> we, were, we were doing this. Red heifer sacrifice could take place in one year in Jerusalem. 
Biblical red heifer could bring millions of visitors to Samaria. The red heifer in the third temple, end of times prophecy. Does a heifer herald bring the beginning of the third temple? And from Texas to Israel, red heifers needed for temple uh, arrival. And so uh, I, I'm, I'm glad we had the time to bring this up. I'm not surprised that you had the uh, knowledge to comment on that as well. Uh, last two minutes here with Dr. Francis Boyle. How, how would you like to uh, make your closing statements here? Yes, yeah, so, and thank you for giving this time. Uh, uh, I have tried since uh, 1987 working with the highest level officials of the Palestinian uh, movement, including Chairman Yasser Arafat, the PLO, uh, to negotiate a two-state solution, starting with the Palestinian Declaration of November 15, 1988, where the Palestinians officially accepted a two-state uh, solution. It's in there. You can read it. It was my idea. I am was their legal uh, advisor on this whole project. Uh, I was also at the uh, Palestinian uh, delegation for the Middle East peace negotiations, 1991 to 1993. But in my experience, going back to November 15, 1988, the Palestinian Declaration uh, of Independence accepting officially the two-state solution on behalf of the Chairman Arafat, the PLO, the Palestine National Council, there has not been one iota of good faith demonstrated by Israel or American Zionists when it comes to the negotiation of a two-state solution. Not one iota. And that, you know, they could have accepted, uh, Israel could have accepted a two-state solution uh, as far back as uh, uh, December 1988. They refused. They have consistently refused. The Zionists want all of Palestine and with as few Palestinians as possible. That is their objective. That is their ultimate objective. That is what uh, Netanyahu is going to, to be pursuing now in, in the coming weeks, unless we here in the United States stop them. It's that simple. And it could set off a, a total catastrophe, certainly the destabilization there, uh, Lebanon, Egypt, uh, Jordan, and as usual, the United States uh, will will be there uh, uh, in, in up to our necks in, in death and destruction. Dr. Francis Boyle, thank you for your time, your knowledge, your wisdom, and your expertise here on The Alex Jones Show. Well, again, thank you, uh, Owen, for having me. I'm my best to everyone there. Uh